To learn to think like a physicist requires using language really carefully. A strange thing happens when you use words carefully. You actually understand the world around you better. So for example, take the word velocity or the word speed. In everyday language, these mean pretty much the same thing, just how fast something is moving. But when you start to study physics, you'll find that actually they have just slightly different meanings. Velocity means how fast something is moving, but it also tells you the direction, whereas speed just refers to how fast. The difference between these two types of quantities are called vectors and scalars. And that's what we're going to dive into in this lesson. We'll learn that vectors are something that has a magnitude that is a size and a direction, while scalars just have a magnitude or size. Maybe that still sounds confusing. That's okay. We're going to take a closer look in this lesson. First, let's review our lesson objectives. First, we're going to define scalars. Then we're going to define vectors. And lastly, we'll identify vectors and scalars. Basically, we'll do some practice problems. Okay, let's start with scalars. What are scalars? What in the world could this thing be? Well, scalars are any quantity that can be described by a magnitude. All right, that's probably still not clear. Let's try an example. Maybe that'll make it clear. Speed is a good example. So whenever you read your speedometer, you're reading out a scalar. Scalars are anything that have size and a unit. So if something has size and a unit, it's a scalar. For example, your speedometer here is reading 140 kilometers per hour. That 140 is a size, that's how big it is, and the kilometers per hour are a unit. So speed is a scalar. Let's look at another example. Height. Height is also a scalar. We're measuring this boy's height on the wall, and if we read it carefully, it looks to be about 100 centimeters. Again, it has the size there, 100, and a unit, centimeters, so it's a scalar, something with a magnitude. Magnitude just means size. Okay, last example, volume. Volume is also a scalar. When we read out the quantity of liquid on this graduated cylinder, we'll see that it's just about 7 milliliters. Again, we have a quantity, a magnitude, that's the 7, and a unit, milliliters. Okay, let's practice spotting some scalars. Pause the video and try to spot five scalars. Okay, first up is the RPMs of our car engine. Just over 500 RPMs. It has a number, 500, and a unit, RPM. Then we have the speed of the car, a whopping zero miles per hour. Next, we have the total distance the car has traveled, 39,904 kilometers. That's called the odometer reading. Then we have the distance the car can travel until it needs a refill of gas. 467 kilometers. The last scalar, maybe the hardest one to spot, is how full our gas tank is. It, we have about three quarters of a tank of gas. Okay, so that's scalars. Let's now talk about vectors. What in the world is a vector? Well, a vector is any quantity with both direction and magnitude. It's any quantity with both direction and and magnitude. So we take a scalar, any scalar, which is always going to have a number and a unit, and if we give it also a direction, suddenly it's a vector. First up is velocity. This car is traveling at some speed, which would be a scalar, but the second we tell you what direction it's going, now suddenly it's a vector. A vector has an arrow. A vector points in some direction. So if I say you're moving at 50 miles per hour, that is just a regular old scalar. If I say 50 miles per hour north, now all of a sudden we have velocity, a vector. Okay, another example would be acceleration. Acceleration is how fast something changes its speed. And it has a direction. In this case, this car is getting pushed back by this giant steel wall, slowing it down. And when we take how quickly it's slowing down and we add the direction, again, we have a vector. So vectors always have directions. Then we have magnetic fields. Notice all these metal filings that are being pulled towards this magnet. How many metal filings are piling up at different spots is a good indication of its magnitude, that is, how strong the field is. And the curved shape of those magnetic filings tells us about the direction. So magnetic fields are also a vector. Okay, last thing we're going to do here is we're going to look at all of these different numbers, and we're going to identify them as a vector, a scalar, or neither. This is another good spot to pause the video and give it a try. 
Okay, first up, 45 miles per hour. Well, that has a size, 45, and a unit. So that makes it a scalar. It doesn't have a direction. That's different than our next example, B, which says 55 miles per hour north. Now we have a size, 55, a unit, miles per hour, and a direction. That's a vector. Okay, next up, we have just 65. Well, that has a size, it's 65, but it doesn't have a unit. So it doesn't really mean anything, and that makes it neither a vector or a scalar. It's just a number. Okay, next up, we have 20 meters to the right. Notice it has a size, 20. It has a unit, meters, and a direction to the right. So that makes it a vector. Okay, on E, we have 15 meters per second squared backwards. Notice, once again, size, 15. Units, we have meters per second squared. That's a, maybe a weird unit, but it's a unit. And the direction, backwards. That makes that a vector. Lastly, just the number 17, which again, we probably can pretty readily see. It doesn't have a unit and it doesn't have a direction, so it's neither. Okay, let's sum up what we've learned. We've defined scalars. We said that scalars are anything that have basically a size. The fancy word for it is magnitude. And if we have a size and a unit, we got a scalar. Next, we defined vectors, which said we took something that has a size and a unit and we added a direction. So the key difference with vectors is that there's a direction involved. And lastly, we learned to identify vectors and scalars. Hey, hey.